Welcome back to the Morning Brew. We uh, roll on here today, and I'm Larry Ahrens, uh, joined by our next guest, Bill Divin. Bill is a railroad historian, a uh, train buff. Is that a fair description? That covers a lot of bases, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk about trains a little bit here on, uh, on the Brew. And this is, Albuquerque is a town that was built by the railroad. And uh, so it's very relevant to the history of this city. Well, historically, uh, Bernalillo was going to be the big rail center, but the Perea family wanted a little too much money for the land up there and didn't really want the railroad, so they came to Albuquerque instead. So Albuquerque is kind of accidentally, historically, a rail center. So a happy accident, and it, it really caused the, the town to grow back in those days uh, faster than anybody thought it would. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the railroads transformed the West. There's no question about sure. that. Everywhere they went, even today, if you locate a commuter, sta a commuter station somewhere, property values go up, people want to live there. Um, Albuquerque absolutely, well, it didn't exist before the railroad. It was Old Town, a mile from where the tracks are. Right. And uh, we got the horse trolley to get from Old Town to New Town. And after a while, New Town just took over. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about trains in New Mexico as we know them today. And, and my, my sister and brother-in-law just came in from Illinois. They're visiting us here. Um, in Albuquerque, and they're, you're here on the set today. Uh, they came in by Amtrak, and my wife and I went out to meet the Amtrak train. I was blown away with how many people were traveling by train uh, in and out of here. Well, the, the Amtrak, a lot of the year, sells out. Uh, Albuquerque does something on the order of uh, 80,000 boardings and arrivals yeah. combined every year. And it's, um, it's kind of off people's radar. If you haven't tr ridden on Amtrak, it's really kind of you know, out of sight, out of mind. It comes through here you know, twice a day. Uh -huh. And unless you happen to be around the tracks and see it go by, you hardly know it's here. But it is an, it's an economic driver. It's a tourism driver. Um, if you don't like to fly, can't fly, yeah. uh, don't like the bus, it's a wonderful way to travel. If you don't you know, pay the high dollar rent for the sleeper, it's not, a, it's not an expensive way to travel either. Sure. Now, there's some ups and downs with Amtrak, right, in, in, in your eyes, in your opinion. Oh, well, you know, the travel experience is the travel experience. Yes. Um, you, know, you, are, you are confined in a space with strangers, which has its ups and downs. Right. Uh, if you go eat in the diner, if you're traveling by yourself or as a couple, you will be seated with strangers. Uh -huh. So you are compelled to carry on conversation. If you don't want to, you know, talk to people, it's not a necessarily a, a good way to travel. Right. Um, it's also, you know, they're having a lot of problems with scheduling. Uh, a lot of them beyond Amtrak's control. Uh, freight railroads get in the way. There's a lot of news about freight rail congestion because of all the, all the oil traffic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, grain shipments are being delayed. Um, so there are just congestion issues out there with the freight trains to the point that um, uh, Amtrak can lose five hours between Gary, Indiana, and Chicago on what is normally about a, about a two and a half hour run. No kidding. Uh, coming out of Kansas, Amtrak can lose time just getting to Albuquerque because of the, there it's an issue of the, uh, the track not right. being in good shape, which yeah. gets in, then, then into the whole issue of the, trying to get the states of New Mexico, Colorado, and Kansas to uh, help support Amtrak. Um, why, why don't we have a better train system in this country, and why don't we model what the Europeans do with their train system? The Europeans have, the, have one benefit, which is it's a much smaller space. The major metropolitan, metropolitan areas are much closer together. And so you've got efficiencies built in that we don't have, especially out here I see. in the West. You've also got a, you know, a political situation where early on, um, Congress was told that Amtrak would eventually show a profit. You know, no public rail system in the world shows a profit. Right. So you still have people who think that Amtrak should be a money-making operation, and I don't think that's possible. Uh -huh. So you've got, the, you've got that situation. Um, and it's, 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 you know, it's a congressionally created operation, so you've got congressional politics ever since it was founded, you know, 40-some years ago. And that always gets in the way of better I improvements to the service and things like that. Well, and, and living year to year, not knowing how much money you're going to have for capital yeah. improvements and for operations, um, all it saved Amtrak is that it goes through an awful lot of congressional districts. <laughs> it's got a lot of friends. <laughs> I bet it does. Why don't we have a real first-class train in this country? We, it, you'd think that we'd be 
you know, providing a real nice way to go on by train. You know, it, when it works, it works very well. I've ridden Amtrak uh, three times this year, uh -huh. um, once back and forth to Flagstaff and, and twice to California, and it was a mixed bag. We were eight hours late getting into Albuquerque on, on one of those, but that had to do with aging equipment failing online. I see. And, and so you've got the issue of, of trying to replace old equipment, some of which, you know, dates back to, back to before Amtrak. Um, you would think that a first-class country would, would want a first-class rail system. You would think. Not just a matter of pride, but as a matter of national security. I mean, look what happened at O'Hare and Midway airports. Right. One guy bent on suicide you know, shuts down the airports. And anybody there who called Amtrak and said, hey, can you get me out of town, probably was told, no, we're full up. Yeah. Let's talk about the Rail Runner for a little bit. I, I, I love the Rail Runner. I think it's an asset to our state. I think uh, it's a nice image. I see that it's being used. It's not going to turn a profit. But I think it's a bonus for the state, and I'd like to see it continue. What's your opinion? It is the, it is the basis for what could be a marvelous transportation system in New Mexico. Um, it, too, has run into political problems. Um, so you don't see it being expanding. There was an attempt at one time to expand it to Gallup. If, if you could you know, expand that system in the state um, with Albuquerque as the hub, you know, that would provide a, you know, a, a great service. Mm -hmm. As it is, um, it, it's keeping a lot of traffic off I-25. Yes. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't drive or don't want to deal with Santa Fe um, or just want to go to Santa Fe for the day, for example, yes. you know, it's a great asset for the locals. Um, They've done a better job of integrating it with the bus systems. So once you, you know, know your way around, you can, you can use it as a real asset. You can come into Albuquerque and go to the museums. You can go to the university. Mm -hmm. You just want to go up to the frontier and, and get a burrito. You can do that and then come back and get on the train and go sure. home. Um, it's, you know, it's got funding problems, too. It's got, what, a $45 million budget, and it only raises, I think it's 2 or $3 million from fares. I see. Um, but you know, all the counties like it. The, the voters approved the sales tax, the gross receipts tax, to help underwrite it. So that's another 12 or $13 million a year. And the rest of it is you know, grants. You get some money because um, um, Burlington Northern uses the rails and, and pays yeah. a fee for that. But it's, you know, it, it, again, it's a funding issue. If we were a wash in cash, you could run that train all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you see it continuing in the future? Politically, do you think? <laughs> It's popular enough to keep it going. Um, I would like to think so. I, I would I, too, I, um, because it really—it's it, the kind of asset that you can build on, yeah. that you can make that the you know the the spine of a much more integrated system. Yeah. Um, you know, politically, it's got friends, it's got issues, um, but I also I also think Bill Richardson when he set it up, um, and he'll take a lot of heat for this and for a lot of things he did, but um, the. The, the amount of money borrowed to set this up is such that if you, you know, killed the rail runner today, you still got the debt to pay. Yeah. So and it's a big debt. Run the train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think the, the, the people that staff it and run it do a super job. It's clean. It's uh, modern. And it's a nice ride. Well, and, and they're getting better at marketing, too, because, uh, yeah. you know, your, your previous guest talking about the event at you know, Balloon Fiesta Park. Right. You know, you're starting to integrate the Rail Runner into other events. Um, I don't think it gets the promotion it deserves. Um, yeah. Again, it's a budget issue. If they had all the money to promote, they could do a lot more. Um, there really needs to be you know, more of a push to use it as an alternative to I-25, because when you're driving to I-25 to go to Santa Fe, like for the legislature, I mean, I, I refer to it as the death race. Because you're, you're out there risking life and limb between the people who want to go 90 and the people who've got the 1955 Chevy pickup truck that needs a tune-up. Yes. And it's just, it's, it's scary. Made that run yesterday. <laughs> so if, uh, it is. It's oh, a racetrack out there. I'm, I'm glad to see you're here today. <laughs> yeah, it, it was hairy there for a while, coming down La Bajada, you know. But I, I love the Rail Runner, and I, I try to use it. I, I see it go by um, most mornings as I'm coming into the studio. I see the... 620 out of here that goes to Santa Fe, and it's just packed with people, and, it, and it's, a, it's a good way to use it. Uh, there, there's a demand and there's a need, and it, it provides a, a public service, which is one of those things that government can actually do. 
It's great visiting with you. This is interesting. My pleasure. Thank well, I, there, there's a lot to be said about, about trains. We haven't even talked about the freight railroads. So. No, we haven't. We'll save that for another day. What do you think? I'll be back. Good. Uh, this segment brought to you by our friends at ABQ Free Press. Uh, they provide great investigative journalism combined with very good reporting, above average, in fact, excellent reporting on the arts and entertainment scene here in uh, Albuquerque as well. So pick up a free copy of ABQ Free Press. It's all over town and have a read. It's good stuff. Bill, terrific to meet you and I've enjoyed the discussion. Thanks so much. We'll do this again. All right, all aboard. Uh, we'll come back on the Morning Brew right after this <laughs> quick timeout. <laughs>